जनक जनित भाव वृत्त संस्कृताश्च अगणन बहुप जत्रको जथार्थ शमित विकृति बाते यहिष्य तम हरमीड़े चित्तवृत्तेरोधम गलित तिमीरमाल सुभ्रतेज प्रकाश धवल कमल शोभ ज्ञान पुंजाट हास जमी जन हृदय गम्य निष्कल ध्याय मान प्रणतम तुमांसमानसोराजहंस आई वर्ष शिव शिव इन होम आइडियाज ऑफ कॉज एंड इफेक्ट थॉट्स एंड इम्प्रेसिस एंड काउंटलेस वेराइट फॉर्म्स बिकम द रियल वन आई वर्षिप हिम इन होम वेन द विंड ऑफ चेंज इज कामड देर इज नाइदर विद इन नॉर विद आउट आई वर्षिप हिम हु इज द परफेक्ट स्टिलनेस ऑफ द माइंड ही हुज थंडरस लैप्टर इज अ फ्राड ऑफ नॉलेज He from whom all darkness is dispersed, who manifests as white radiance, who is beautiful as the white lotus, he who is indivisible, who is sought in meditation, he who is realized in the heart of men of self-control, may he, the lordly swan of my mind, protect me. May he protect me, who am bowing before him. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. peace 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 today our yesterday was a wonderful day of celebrating shiva and we'll be today we'll be talking about shiva and ramakrishna shiva particularly the uh, topic was dataraj the dancing shiva Ramakrishna so much similarity is there with Sri Ramakrishna and Ramakrishna is that we think that Ramakrishna is Shiva but Shiva is a mythical god and to connect with a historic person is a little uh, difficult to connect fully but we find that exactly it is Shiva nature of course Ramakrishna is the some come expression of all shiva nature krishna nature ram nature vishnu nature mother nature every nature all included but we can because these dates of shivaratri and ramakrishna's advent were so close and so many similarities are there it is better to look from that perspective how shiva appeared in the form of ramakrishna and particularly Nataraja Shiva, Nataraja Shiva is that where is dancing, and dance is the destruction of what of the ignorance, destruction of which is dark and which takes us away from the divine. That 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 dance, that destruction dance is that dance, and Sri Ramakrishna is to always dance in that ecstasy. We find that there is a wonderful simile. and when he is to dance where is the world the people who are around they used to all get transported into another level another level of trans- transcendence where there is no world there is no worldliness there is no suffering there is no pain as it were so that is the we like to connect and she was so many characteristics we find Shiva is lives in the cremation ground, eh? and we find Ramakrishna from the childhood days in meditating in the cremation ground. We can find that Shiva is wearing ashes all over the body. Ashes are what? Ashes of burning all the desires and lust and greed, and that is the example. And and Sri Ramakrishna born very very first time. He was born in smearing ashes in the when the the midwife could not find him after birth. So we can find so many places of similar ideas. 
Sri Ramakrishna is born uh, from the, the, the effulgent light which came out of the Shiva temple. So Chandramani felt that the child is born. So, and there is, Shiva is considered to be the light, effulgence, uh, unlimited light. So Shiva Puran, Shiva manifests as the column of light. We find that this type of different connections make us understand a little bit how the transcendental truth is also becomes reality in life. And as time changes, we people in the modern age can see the same Shiva ideal manifesting in the life of Ramakrishna. Shiva is considered to stay in two states. One state is in Samadhi, that's where you find that he is lying at the feet of Mahakali, perfectly calm and serene, totally absorbed in another world, in Samadhi. So Samadhi were transfixed in the great yoga and staying in this condition of the Atma Rama condition, being satisfied within himself. And another state, when we find he descends from the Samadhi and keeps a trace of ego, then he dances. And it is said when he comes down from that Samadhi Ramakrishna, we can find also the same similar picture. It, it, before our image, mind, comes the picture. Shiva in Samadhi, absolutely transcendental. Ramakrishna in Samadhi, absolutely beyond all duality. The body consciousness is gone. There is no sense of any I in, in him. And then when he comes down, we find that he's speaking, talking, and relating, and then again dancing in joy. So Shiva dances he when he comes down from Samadhi, and he keeps a little trace of ego. And Nataraj Shiva combines in a single image Shiva's role as the creator, preserver, and destroyer. And we, we have Hindu myth mythological idea, Brahma creates. And Vishnu preserves, a division of labor. One God, the Absolute, become Ishara, and Ishara then creates three aspects of it. One is creation aspect, you take care of creation aspect, you take care of preservation aspect, and another will be destroying to create the new. But in the, some people, in the, of course the devotees of Shiva will think he is the lord of creation, he is the lord of preservation, and he is the lord of destruction. So it conveys this Indian concept of the time, never-ending cycle of time. That creation, it is not a linear, it is a cyclical. It rotates creation, preservation, destruction, destruction to preserve creation, like that it goes on and on and on, infinite chain. So it is uh, three aspects. Now, there is a story, a beautiful story of Shiva. That uh, creator God is Brahma, as we know, and the God of preservation is Lord Vishnu. So it is said in the Shiva legend, the Lord Vishnu, the God of preservation, he was lying on the serpent couch in the sea of eternity. We find that there is a Krishna Narayana is uh, Vishnu is lying on a serpent with the hood up on Antanaga. And he was relaxing. And suddenly <coughs> Lord Brahma, the creator, he appeared there. And while passing, he was passing away, but Vishnu didn't show any respect. He should respect. He is my creator. You come second, first God created, no? Brahma created everything. So preservation will come next. So I am a senior, so you should respect me. So even the gods have done some jealousy, no? 
<laughs> That's why Vedanta says, not heaven is not good. Even if you go, there will remain trace of ego, trace of this play. So he says that when he felt insulted, and Brahma then, Brahma uh, got into anger, and then Brahma and Vishnu, they went into hot heat debate and discussion. I, I am great, you are great, this, that discussion was going on. And then ultimately, <coughs> they went into fight. Then the gods and goddesses, this is this, this story goes like that. Gods and goddesses, they feel, oh my God, what will happen now? Uh, the Brahma and Vishnu, they are fighting. So how to stop this, uh, this type of calamity? And then they approached Lord Shiva. Shiva was in Samadhi. Then Shiva was very pleased, Ashutosha. Quickly he responds to the call of devotees. So he just, uh, when called, he appeared, he woke up and said, what's the problem? This is the problem. Okay, then he appeared. He appeared in between Brahma and Vishnu. The mythical story is like that. You like or dislike this, this story, interesting story. And then you find that there is a shaft of light. And uh, the Shiva pierced the three worlds. Three worlds mean earth, heaven, and hell, all these three worlds appearing as a huge infinite pillar of light. That is called the Jyotirlinga. Hmm? Both Brahma and Vishnu just saw that infinite light. And Vishnu wanted, and, and she said, you, you are debating about who is first, second, senior, junior. Eh? So find the beginning and end of this shaft of light. So Vishnu, went down and to find the beginning, where is the beginning, lower range, and he could not find any be where it began, it's endless. And he came back and he uh, humbly said, i sorry, I could not find the beginning of Shiva, the shaft of light where it started. And Brahma, he went, he went to see the, where it ended, beginning to end, where it ended. So he started his journey and going some distance, then he thought, okay, but how far to go? And they found one flower that's called Ketoki flower. So when he, he that is dropping, so he said, Ketoki, did you find the beginning, uh, end of this, um, this shaft of light? He said, yes, I found, and I'm coming from there. And Brahma said, oh, good, good friends. So they agreed with each other and came back and told, I have found the end of this light of sapt. Sapt light. Don't show a pillar of light. So then Vishnu, unable to touch the base, came up, admitted his defeat. Whereas Brahma, in his journey upward, came across that Ketaki flower falling down slowly and inquiring from the flower, from where the flower has come from, the Ketoki replied that she had been placed on the top of the huge pillar of light. Of course it is a lie. So Brahma lied that he had discovered the end of the light. So producing a Ketoki flower as a proof. Now, the dishonesty of Brahma angered Lord Shiva, and he cursed him. That's why many, many people put this question. Brahma is the creator. Why his picture, his image is not worshipped? Even all over the country you go, you will find Vishnu temple, you will find Shiva temple in everywhere, but you don't find Brahma's temple. So that reason is that, he has cursed, Shiva cursed, because he lied that it is Shiva is endless and beginningless, and uh, you have lied that you have found the end of it, so, so you will not be worshipped. So Shiva's curse stopped, meaning that whatever this story goes on, uh, then 
Vishnu uh, is worshipped everywhere because, and the flower, which was uh, supporting the idea that the flower could find the top of the Shiva. So he, she also lied. So Shiva caste, you will not be worshipped in any puja. So therefore we don't have so many types of puja. We don't find the Ketaki flower. So that is the um, Puranic story goes like that. So Shiva and uh, Brahma lied that he had discovered the end of light, producing a Ketaki flower as proof. The dishonesty of Brahma angered Shiva, causing him to curse the creator deity, and he would not be worshipped. He also declared that Vishnu would be eternally worshipped for his honesty. So, similarly, Ketoki flower was also cursed that she would never again be used in worship of Shiva. Thus, Ketoki is devoured forever from being offered in worship. So, this is a story. So, what we can take from out of it, that it is that God, Shiva is nothing but the Satchidananda, is endless and beginningless. There is no middle, there is no end. So, to look at Shiva from that perspective is the perfect vision. And to find a beginning and end, it is the duality. So he is all beyond all duality. And when he comes down from that state of samadhi, then he dances. And in that dance, this is very interesting. They talk about Shiva's dance that Nato Rajo, that's why his name is Nato Rajo. Nato, Nato means the <coughs> actor or dancer, uh, those who perform dramatic art. And Raja is the king. So Shiva is considered to be the king of dancing. Shiva dances when he comes down from Samadhi. And it is two ways of dancing. One is called Ananda Tandav. Another is called Rudra Tandav. Ananda Tandav means when it starts very beginning and it's very smooth way, no? Suppose you can imagine the ocean of, ocean of a Pacific Ocean where there's a calm, serene thing that that is Shiva. And the cool breeze coming very softly. A little ripple, little ripple. Eh? That's the Ananda, that's, that is the beginning of creation started there. And that is a dance, but that dance is connected with the joy and bliss. And then it becomes Rudra Tandav when, after creation, maintenance, and then dance, vigorous dance, to destroy what is evil, what is negative. That's why Shiva is called that he is Leela Nataka Chedanakari. He destroys, he cuts asunder this Nataka, the play. Uh, of this Leela, this, this, this play which is going on in this world, that play, to break that play and bring back everyone to the home, that is the Leela, the divine play of Lord Shiva. And, and he comes as a distraction. Distraction is not distraction, but distraction is to bring back uh, the ignorant soul to their own self. And we find that this Ramakrishna, while visiting Benaras, he was in a boat, and he, near the Manikarnika, where the cremation ghat, he saw that the dead body and Mother Annapurna unties the knot, and we find that Lord Ramakrishna saw Lord Shiva came and giving the mantra, and the soul is getting released. So death is not death. This, the dance which Tandava is a vigorous dance of that, that is to free the individual soul from uh, all ignorance. Sri Ramakrishna, if we can think of Sri Ramakrishna, look at that Sri Ramakrishna dancing. Just one picture of Ramakrishna. He went to what is called that Vaishnava uh, group of people, uh, Panihati. And they were dancing in the name of God. But Sri Ramakrishna, as soon as he found, he went there, he rushed. That there is a good description. He rushed into the big crowd and 
Then he danced in such a way, everyone is transported. And then when that dance goes on, Sri Ramakrishna in his room also, Dakshineshwar, we find that he's dancing everywhere. He's, so he's transcending, and that dance is a destruction of our worldliness. The view, worldly view in which we live, Sri Ramakrishna transports that whenever he's in that, that type of dance. So here, that Sri Ramakrishna said, I do accept both the absolute as also the, the play of duality, no? Leela. Leela and Nitta. I accept both. Sri Ramakrishna in Nirvikalpa state, going into ecstatic samadhi in, like Shiva, and coming down again, dancing. And that dance is a very soothing dance, though, with the song and music, and, but the presence removes all the darkness of the heart of all the people who are around. Their mind is getting transported into a divine plane. So that is called the Shiva dance. And Tandava is that. To, uh, this is also called another name, Lasya, gentle form of dance associated with creation. And Tandava, the dance of bliss, the vigorous form of dance associated with the destruction of the worldview, weary perspective of and lifestyle. Weary perspective and lifestyle, weary lifestyle and worldview to change, this is the Shiva's destruction. So these are just two aspects of Shiva's nature. He destroys in order to create and tearing down the old. Uh, he. So we find that Sri Ramakrishna dancing, not only dancing himself, He's in, encouraging everyone. He's encouraging everyone to dance. He's an Ananda dance, and he's, he's scolding. One day, we find that the, the, he was ecstatic in joy, and then he was scolding M, because M was sitting. He's a college professor, and he's dance. Sri Ramakrishna has no sense of superiority or inferiority. So, the young boys came, he's dancing with the boys, and I, Latu, even he's running with, dancing with Sri Ramakrishna. All these boys, they used to roll down in the ground in ecstatic condition, no? Then even he said, who has the, today's real, real bhava? Eh? Latu has the bhava today. So we find that the dance transports individually into a different level. And he's scolding that we should not be so much think, uh, thinking of our own position, prestige, then we world view. I am such a such professor, I am such a organ rich person, how can I be dancing in the name of God? So he scolded him uh, that but you are shying yourself and to transcend that weakness, destroying the world view. <coughs> Dance is seen as the image of his rhythmic and musical play, which is the source of all movements within the universe. There's also another, this dance everywhere, in the stars and planets, in the galaxies, there is a dance. Uh, in the subatomic particle, there is a dance. It is, the whole world is pulsating, there is a dance going on. And cause this is the represented by the uh, that is, and this is represented by the circular uh, el elliptical ring surrounding Shiva. Purpose of his dance, as I said, the release the souls of all men from the snare of illusion. And this illusion, which this duality created, forgetting our real nature, it is Shiva comes to break that. And the place of dance is called Chid Ambaram. Mm -hmm. Chitta Kasha, that can be described like this. Chidambaram is a place where there's a holy place uh, related with Shiva in the universe. Actually, but it is, if we take the spiritual sense, Chit Ambaram. Ambar is the space, Chit is the heart. Na? Chitta Kasha. So where he dances? Shiva dances in the heart. Ramakrishna dances in the heart. That is the good place. And then that dance will take our worldview and look towards him. 
towards the transcendental truth and joy, forgetting that what is going on in this world. So to turn our attention to that dance which is going on inside. So this is also another way. And this dance is a fearless celebration of the joys of dance while being surrounded by fire. That's fire of world and worldliness, and this fire is protecting, untouched by the forces of ignorance and evil from outside. The dance is going on inside. It signifies a spirituality that transcends duality. So it teaches that a human being should conquer this spiritual, that, that ignorance, uh, and should in thrill in the joy of self-realization, focusing within. Now, let us go back to the point what we are trying to think about Ramakrishna as Shiva, how Ramakrishna uh, comes into the picture. We know Ramakrishna was born, is before his birth, mother had that vision, I referred just quickly. Mother was standing in front of the Shiva temple of the Jugis in the village of Kamarpukur, and she was talking to her village friend, Dhani, Dhani Kamarani, and then suddenly she found that the Shiva Lingam is no stone or anything. Radiant light started coming from that and it engulfed the whole inner sanctum and sanctorium. And to the door, a beam of light came and it hit him, hit her, and it entered into her. And she felt that she has conceived uh, something. And this, that is the way she, she was entering into Chandra Devi. And then entering into that, give the birth of she. Ramakrishna. We find from the beginning this connection. We find that the dhani, after the birth, as I just referred, could not find the baby. After finishing the mother, taking care of the mother, when the midwife dhani was trying to find the baby, but could not find. It was silently just slipped into uh, that place where there is some ashes. And he was smeared with the total ashes. Very beginning started with the total renunciation, symbolic of that. Ashes, that story uh, also is there, sim that we know that story, uh, that once the um, Shiva was in deep meditation and the gods uh, inspired their god of lust. In Hinduism, every, there is God for everyone. Uh, for rain, you've got a God. Light, you can get a God. For your hand, there is God. So naturally, he was lust. is lust in the mind of people. So there is a God of lust. And he tried to create disturbance in the mind of Ra. So Shiva was meditating in near the highest state, and his mind was disturbed, and he watched and saw that God of love is standing there to disturb and distort him and to bring him in mind from the Samadhi by the request for the request for the saving of the, uh, the gods. And gods inspired this person, this one of the gods, you go and bring the mind down of Shiva uh, to the duality plane. So put lust in his mind. But as soon as he found that, he was so angry, he looked at that God of love called Madan and it turned into ashes. So this is the ashes. Ashes is the representative of renunciation. Total uh, ignorance, uh, avoidance of the worldliness from the... That's why Shiva dances in the cremation ground. He is found in the cremation ground. Cremation ground is all people die and it turned into ashes. And Sri Ramakrishna is very beginning. That's why when you see Shiva, yesterday Shiva was dancing. Did you watch that his whole body it looks white? White. It is ashes, ash color. Not white means not that, but it is more ash color. So giving it 
actually symbolizes turning away or burning these sensual expressions, renunciation of the world to attain liberation. So we find that Ramakrishna also, Holy Mother said about Ramakrishna. Ramakrishna is harmonizer of all religion and other aspects, but Holy Mother said, no, renunciation is the wonderful characteristic of Holy Ma Sri Ramakrishna. More than anything else, that is renunciation. The world has never seen such renunciation, such detachment, such even touching the coin, his hand is twisting. Ah, he cannot think of anything which is connected. Someone is bringing something, food, which has been looked upon by somebody with a desire to taste, he cannot touch that. It's, it's getting some lemon, which he is to use every day. One day, somebody brought a lemon, that's Jogin, brought a le lemon for Ramakrishna's lunch time. He used to squeeze some lemon. And Ramakrishna tried to take three pieces one by one, take the lemon to squeeze on the plate, it falls in the ground. Before that, hand slackens. There is no example of just such extraordinary truthfulness manifested in human personality, that Shiva ideal. And ultimately it was found, oh, that lemon does not belong to uh, Jogin's family, because that lease was over. It was a lease, lease line, and who knows, in the signature of the legal paper, who cares for a lemon tree? And in India, in those days. But that he could not touch. So extraordinary purity, extraordinary renunciation, world has never seen it before. So that's why it is a Shiva nature where he find the similarity. Kshudiram went to Rameshwaram and Benaras, and when he went there, he brought Shivalingam, one, and that is Rameshwara Shiva. Is still now worshipped in their ancestral home. Uh, Shudiram named Shambhu Chandra, name of, in the name of Lord Shiva. That means there, in the family, his father, father is also interested in Shiva, and there is so much connection with Shiva. We know that Gadarhar. <clears throat> it is a realized oneness with Shiva. Without, at the very beginning, uh, Shiva without sadhana even, when asked to play in the role of Shiva in Kamar Pukur. That story, uh, there was a Shiva night. As we celebrated Shiva night, we ended at 1 o'clock or 1.30, 1 o'clock. But uh, tradition is that you have to go on whole night. And Shiva, is a Shiva worshipper should be also learn this, that Shiva is not a, like other gods. Other gods and goddesses, you can get good lunch, good supper, good this. But for Shiva, you have to fast whole day. For Shiva, you will have to fast whole night. The Shiva worshippers are to be very careful about renunciation, forced renunciation. Swami Shankarananda Maharaj was born on Shiva night. So his di di disciples did not celebrate much of his birthdays. <laughs> because when he said that, Maharaj, we want to celebrate your birthday, na? someone said, okay, so fast, whole day, whole night be awake and take the name of Shiva. <laughs> so who will go for that? We want to have good prasad, lunch, tea, break, this, that, and there's festivity. But Shiva himself is a lord of renunciation, extreme renunciation and detachment, huh? but full of love. That is the uniqueness, what Ramakrishna character. Total detachment, uh, total purity, at the same time, deepest love and deepest affection. So, he, we know that night, when night came, and they have an open stage theater to perform Shiva, Shiva uh, enacting Shiva's stories of life like that, that was the earlier style. So, not like movie has come that time, it is only open, open stage theater. So, 
And the person who was to act on the role of Shiva was sick. So they found Narin, Rakhal, Ramakrishna, Godai. Godai will be the best guy to appear like Shiva. And actually, everyone was excited. And then he brought, and he was dressed like a Shiva and appeared in the, in the stage. As soon as appeared, and everyone was just excited, and Shiva, 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 Shiva. And he hearing, and he went into ecstasy. Boss, the three days he went into that state of what is called uh, lost his outer consciousness. So it is very nature is Shiva nature. In the pine, in the house of the pine, and remain in that state of uh, ecstasy for days. And we find that in the another story, we find that. Sri Ramakrishna in Dakshineshwar. There are 12 Shiva temples, and where one, where he was, she, he one day got to praise. We Shiva Mahimna yesterday, uh, it was sung here. So, in that one verse, there is that, Oh Shiva, you are so great, no one can describe your glory. Ashita Giri Shamam Shat Kajalam Shindu Patre. Suratarubaro lekha, lekha ni patra murvi. Anyhow, so he said that if Mother Saraswati, the mother of all learning and wisdom, herself starts writing about your glories, and it, she continues to write, and write the paper, this paper is small, so your glory, the whole earth, imagine the whole earth, surface of the earth is the paper. And Mother Saraswati writes on that paper and continues to write. They could not be able to uh, glorify you enough. So, and he chanted that verse and he was overwhelmed with this idea. And he just embraced Lord Shiva and the lingam and sat on it. And naturally the priests around, they got come in to see this and see that in the what a crazy guy, what he's doing. So they are very angry and they are calling, let us pull him down and we'll beat him. It's, this is sacrilege. Huh? Sitting on this Shiva Lingam itself. And then anyhow, Mathur Babu was there, the landlord, he came into, just saw that and he threatened everyone that if anyone want to touch my father, Ramakrishna, your head will be chopped now, here now. So everyone got scared and they left. That he could understand Sri Ramakrishna is a high mood of spiritual excitement and a Shiva mood. So now we also know Sri Ramakrishna's life, all tidbit stories you all know, but just, this is just to remember. Mathur uh, did not get all these ideas so easily. So Mathur one day saw that Sri Ramakrishna was walking back and forth uh, in the baranda, and his office was such a place he could see in Dakshineshwar. If you go, you can find it, that place. So Ramakrishna moving back and forth, and Mathur saw one side is Lord Shiva with a trident in the hand, moving, and another direction, Mother Kali coming. And he could not believe his own eyes. So he doubted his eyes once, twice, and when he saw third time, he could not retain himself and went to see that it is Ramakrishna, he is Shiva. Ramakrishna is Mother Kali, but we are concerned about Shiva today. So Sri Ramakrishna was Jagadishwara, who realized the Jagat itself is Ishwara, Shiva. That's the point. Jagadishwara felt the Jagat is Ishwara, and Jagat is He. It is He. Sri Ramakrishna said in another place, Ami Huechi, Ami Esechi. I have become. I have come down. I have become this, this entire universe. It is me only. So Sri Ramakrishna's story is that, that one day, while worshipping Shiva, I was about to put a bell leaf on the head of the image when it was revealed to me that this Virata, this universe itself is Shiva. So Shiva is not a mythical god. Shiva, that reality, 
which is the entire creation, is Shiva appearing this way. I am seeing that that's why this idea can hold Sri Ramakrishna's idea, Shiva, Gane, Jiva, Shiva, to look upon Jiva, individual, not as individual, but it is Shiva and Shiva himself. It is the play of Shiva going on. And so he said his own experience that when I was worshipping Shiva, I was about to put a bell leaf on the Shiva Lingam, eh, but on the head of the image, when it was revealed to me that this Virata, this universe itself, is Shiva. And then he said, after this, my worship of Shiva through the image came to an end. One image to worship Shiva in a particular image, that is stopped because I saw Shiva everywhere. And Shiva. And Shiva Ramakrishna, as I said, just he himself said that, that I have come, I have become. It's a, it is a great statement, very quickly to finish. Ami Huechi. Ami Esechi. Ami, that transcendental reality. That Shiva nature. Have come. Come in this physical form as you see me. But not only that, I am Huechi. I have become what you see. Stars, galaxies, root, drum, trees, plants, human being. Whatever you see. Ami Huechi. I have become. So what we see, that is the Shiva nature and Shiva self expressing in certain moment of, uh, you can say, great fortune to know. He has expressed these ideas. Uh, that's why Ramakrishna, Vivekananda said, it's very difficult to talk about Sri Ramakrishna, to describe about Ramakrishna. Because to describe anything we say about Ramakrishna, we belittle him. Because he's so vast, it, you, you will always limit him. In, in praising him, we limit him. Because he is beyond all duality, the transcendental nature. Sri Ramakrishna remained in this Shiva, always remained in true state, in the Bhava Samadhi during daytime, Nirvikalpa Samadhi at night, no? But Ramakrishna, day and night, one time he is in Bhava Samadhi, in Bhava Mukta, doing the, all the work, staying in the threshold, where seeing that divine and nothing but the divine. And another time, totally absorbed in his own self. So, beautiful an, an analogy, or, or you can say the com similarity, that Shiva is one time in the nirvikalpa state of Samadhi, he says that the night, and in the day, he is always in the Bhava Samadhi. That means it is a state where there is nothing but the Shiva. And Sri Ramakrishna used to live in that Bhava Mukha all the time, in the threshold of uh, the Nirvikalpa and Savikalpa. So did not, Shiva did not care for praise or blame. Shiva in his own mood. Ramakrishna didn't care who likes, who dislikes. Sri Ramakrishna used to go to Calcutta, unwanted, and in, enter into the group of people who are talking about God, thinking about God, and go and singing, dancing. So Rabindranath's father once invited him to come, and then he withdrew the invitation. Because he goes singing and dancing, sometimes he will naked. So sophisticated society cannot accept that. So he said, okay, Baba, don't come. <laughs> Rather, you will stay in your place. Shiva? Shiva is the same, what he wears. She's naked. Naked Shiva. That's why the ashes are the uh, only coating on the body. No? So, never cared for the glorification. And Shiva, bam bam bam, Shiva, bhuchao amar moner bhum. Oh Shiva, please destroy our doubts of our mind, eh? that this world is illusory. Get this experience and give us the knowledge of self. So, Sri Ramakrishna never cared also for the glorification, or rather he would get upset if someone would praise him. Even he is talking to Keshav Shen. Keshav Shen actually was the instrumental to bring Ramakrishna into the uh, Calcutta people of that time, most powerful speaker and 
writer and he has his magazine to which Ramakrishna's glory he manifested. And when Ramakrishna heard about that, how will be happy? Suppose you, see, you glorify my name, Sarvadevanan is so great, then what will happen? I will always come and have a tea with me, you know? Or I will praise you, I will be happy and with good friendship with. But Ramakrishna said, hey, why do you talk about all those things about me? Do you think that you can make me great? Only God makes him great, who makes him great, he can be great. So this is a total different Ramakrishna. This is a Shiva ideal. Who cares for what? This world is unreal. And you pay praise, you will be blamed. Blame and then praise. So an example of how one can transcend praise and blame, both above. If you say, I don't like praise, but people should not blame me. That's not true. Psychologically, you have an inclination for the praise. That's why you blame you don't like. So blame and praise, both are to be renounced. That's the greatest ideal. And Shiva stands for that. And Ramakrishna stands for that. <coughs> Shiva dances, as I said, in the cremation ground. And that is where the world uh, disappears. And it cannot draw any attraction for the person when people are in that cremation ground. When you go to cremation ground, we go to the cemetery, what impression comes? Our mind naturally becomes detached. Oh, this is the end of life? Where is this person? He may be a very rich person, very powerful person, dominating person. He was very much famous among hundreds and thousands. But it's in this, this is the conclusion of that. So that is the ground for renunciation. Uh, and Sri Ramakrishna used to select that place for meditation. You know, when even child, no one taught him. But he used to go away from home and to meditate in silence in Bhutirkal, in Budhu Imodal. These are the places of cremation ground. And even his elder brother used to search for not seeing Godai for a long time. Godai, where are you? Where are you? And he will be suddenly, suddenly, at a certain point, he'll say, Brother, I am here. Don't come here. There are ghosts. There are uh, other, uh, what you call, departed souls. Bhut. Bhut Pretachi. So don't come here. So, but he is fearless, a child. How is he fearless? We remember when we are in, uh, small kids, and if there is a cremation ground, we wouldn't want to go there. Uh, with elderly people, we can go in daytime. Uh, evening time to pass through that area is a fearful thing. There are ghosts and dead bodies, uh, deadly people, no? So, but see, Sri Ramakrishna, he loves that place to reside there and to meditate, thinking the emptiness of the world. The emptiness of the world is to be understood. Shiva stands for that, and Ramakrishna stands for that. So, uh, if we think that way, see Ramakrishna, uh, that to destroy the ignorance of us, see Ramakrishna came, and the mythical God whom we say that it is Shiva, he also came to that purpose to exemplify the ideal of total renunciation, total detachment, and which we take in our life, we cannot take it in proper way. But when the destruction or uh, something happens which we don't like in life, as a bad thing, but that is the waking up call for to understand the momentariness of this world. And Shiva stands for that, and Ramakrishna stands for that. He's always talking, Ramakrishna saying all the time, God first and the world next. The, everything is secondary, everything is changing, everything is my, momentary. First, realize God. How? By detachment, by remaining in the world, but not getting attached to anything, and loving God and God and God. So the two in ideal, uh, Nataraja, Shiva, and Ramakrishna, representing the same principle, we can find some similarity. And if we can absorb something of these ideas, our life will be blessed. Thank you.
Okay, now uh, we are talking about Sri Ramakrishna. We selected this topic because of that only, that uh, because uh, Sri Ramakrishna Puja is coming on the 26th. We are celebrating, but his day is 21st, no? Na Tuesday. Tuesday. Tuesday is the 21st, and the Tithi Puja day, that is the, uh, but we celebrate on Sundays for the availability of others. So 26th is uh, next Sunday, no lecture, but Sri Ramakrishna Puja will be here. You are all welcome. 10 o'clock Puja starts, we go as usual, and 1 o'clock, around 1 o'clock home of fire, and 1.45 flower offering, and then 2 p.m. Prasad. And then 3 p.m. to 4.30, we have songs from gospel. Our monks, our nuns, they can sing uh, these gospel songs. Uh, what is in the Ramakrishna sang all this. Ramakrishna Ramakrishna Kirtan. Ramakrishna Ramakrishna Kirtan, we can also do that. Yeah, that also you can include. <laughs> oh, Ramakrishna Ramakrishna, yeah, there are 108 names. Uh, that also can be chanted. Or if someone additionally, if time permits, you can join in, in that say. And to in the afternoon, there will be little talk, 5.15 onward, and then a special aruti. This is the next Sunday. And what else? Yeah, we'll have some question and answer session in the living room if you come. And there is some snacks as usual, habit. So I'll end with a prayer for Sri Ramakrishna, Ramakrishna Suprabhatam. Om Nityam Samadhija Shukam Nijabodha Rupam Asyadayan Tapapade Saranagatam Scho Anandayan Prasamayan Upatishta Shetvam Sri Ramakrishna Bhagavan Tava Suprabhatam Svikritya Papam Akhilam Saranagato Idiyat Ajivanam Bahukritam Dayaya Swadehi Tajjata Kedani Bahang Sahasis Manata Sri Ramakrishna Bhagavan Tabu Shuprahatam O Ramakrishna, you continuously experience the bliss of Samadhi to self-knowledge, self-knowledge and dwell here granting joy and peace to those who have taken refuge at your feet. O Ramakrishna, your glorious morning has arrived. You bear the physical pain resulting from compassionately taking upon yourself the bad karmas done throughout their lives by those who have taken refuge in you. O Ramakrishna, your glorious morning has arrived. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace. Shiva is called Nilokantha. His throat is blue, drinking the poison. See, we can find Ramakrishna also suffered from throat cancer. The same poison uh, of others, suffering of others. Wonderful. Thank you.